why so many things are seen in black America through the lens of race. Does that make us racist or realist? Sometimes we got it right. Sometimes we got it wrong, but always we kept asking why. And so here we are, one year later, yes, and still standing, and still asking the tough questions of our guest and of you. And joining us this morning, some of the most familiar faces you've seen on this broadcast. Our BNC contributor, Atiba Madhu, who's also the president of Party Politics USA. BNC contributor, Teslin Figaro, who is the host of the Straight Shot No Chaser podcast, who loves to argue with me, by the way. And Democratic strategist and lawyer, Terry Austin. So, Teslin, I'll begin with you. The question I get asked the most is, why do we need a black news channel and, and have we made a difference? It's so critically uh, important, and I, I hope at, that we made a difference. In fact, I don't want to hope or pray. I want to say that it has made a difference. Just the opportunity yeah. to be able to center conversations around Black folks, uh, it's been the most rewarding thing ever in my career. And I really mean that, Dale. I'm not just saying that I've, I've appeared, like I'm sure many of my colleagues, on uh, all of the mainstream uh, cable news outlets. But this has been the most important, uh, because although I may appear uh, and have been on other outlets, and I center my conversation on Black people. I make it my business to do so. This is the first time that I have actually, uh, that it's been a requirement to talk about how things affect Black people. And so to have that on cable news and, and streaming in 55 million homes, which a lot of people don't even realize that yet, uh, is a powerful statement. I know that things uh, don't last forever, but if there was something that needed to last forever, uh, it is certainly BNC News. And everyone you know, may not agree with all of the commentators and all of the hosts, but just to be able to have the conversation openly, uh, to hear diverse opinions, whether it's Republican, independent, progressive, Democrat, uh, from various walks of life, and the CB and see not just cover the news of the day, but also uh, lifestyle stories, like the story that we just showed a moment ago about a, uh, a woman giving her son, her black son, flowers. You could never see that uh, on mainstream media or local news. So it's critically important. And I know that we've made a difference just by showing up. And Atiba, a, a secret on why we do things the way we do. At the black dinner table, it is not ask a question, get an answer, shuffle the papers, go to commercial break. Uh, sometimes it, it's past the grits, ask the question, are you serious? Uh, we argue, we fight, we cajole each other. I mean, if you want to know how black America gets along, watch a game of bid whist. Um, that's the way we deal with issues. So many topics have lacked the black perspective. You know, I think about George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Dante Wright. I remember a BNC uh, correspondent asking a question when Dante Wright was killed, saying, why did you pull him over in the first place? Because we're in COVID. He couldn't get a new license. Um, that's what we wanted to do with this broadcast, because we wanted Capitol Hill to know how we think, how we ask questions, and, and how we cry BS when it is time to cry BS. Yeah, first off, I want to say congratulations to you, the team here at DC today and BNC for, you know, this one-year anniversary. And thank you all, too, also for creating this program that, with this opportunity for us to talk about these very important issues and talk about them, as you said, like we do at a dinner table. You know, um, I remember growing up often being the last one sitting at the dinner table with my father talking about issues. And while we didn't always agree, we could leave the table and still love each other. And I think part of what's um, the public discourse that we have in terms of politics today, it's unfortunate we aren't having these type of conversations without being able to, to respect one another's opinion. It's kind of like there's division in the sand. And, and the issues that affect African Americans are important. The issues about talking about these, these things are important. Also, trying to get to a place where we're getting to the solutions in terms of how we fix them are just as important. I think BNC is doing a great job of having um, activists and people on here who are doing the work, doing the work on the ground that we don't often hear about. We always hear about what's happening, but we don't talk about the pathway to get there. And so, you know, some of the other networks will um, kind of portray this almost in a doom and gloom kind of way. And while it does appear sometimes when we're talking about these things of doom and gloom, I think we are talking about things in a way that hopefully our audience is also grasping or recognizing the importance of us staying engaged in this in this process, the importance of us having these conversations. And hopefully these conversations are going 
far beyond just the, 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 the hour or two that we're here on DC today, but into those dining rooms, into those um, homes, into people's uh, water cooler conversations at, at work. Um, but these conversations are important. And the fact that BNC continues to, to report about them, I think about, for instance, the coverage on Haiti, um, you know, some of the other networks were kind of letting that go, but BNC continued to talk about them. And though they may go away, BNC is the network that continues to bring them back and talk about them as it relates to other issues. So um, grateful, one, for BNC, but also hopeful that the audience is grasping and, and getting this in a way that these conversations are going farther beyond than just on the television sets. And Terry, you were one of the first panelists that we ever had on. And, and, and I've always believed that one of the most important tasks we face is convincing a multicultural America that it is no longer predominantly white in cities like New York, where you are, and that somehow the sky didn't fall when the various races decided that they wanted to exercise their political clout. You know, you raise an excellent point. Most people don't recognize the fact that minorities, quote unquote, are no longer minorities because we do take up the greater percentage of the population now, particularly if you put people of color together with those who are Spanish speaking, with those who are from Asian descent. There is no question that we now are a majority and the sky has not fallen. Clearly, we know how to run businesses. Clearly, we know how to vote. We know how to do everything that the typical majority might have thought about and were afraid of when we began to take political positions, for instance, when we began to have positions in Congress, on the courthouse, at the highest level of the Supreme Court. So. Clearly, we have gotten to a point where we are starting to represent in this country. But, you know, BNC, and congratulations, BNC is making sure that those stories are out there. And I think in two different ways. One, obviously, the types of topics that you pick to talk about. You're not going to miss the George Floyds, the Ahmaud Arbery's, the Breonna Taylor's, clearly the Dante Wright's. But you also, secondarily, have a specific you know, angle on those stories. You have a specific perspective on those stories. And we are able to give those perspectives and be free and comfortable about giving that perspective. I, too, speak on different networks and basically cannot express what I would like to really express on those networks. We are able to do that comfortably here. We are able to give our opinions, our real opinions about particular situations, and it's making a difference. I do believe that the huge viewership is getting out there and people are beginning to understand our perspective so that when we see something that's on that video that the phones are taking and we spread the word, that makes a difference, Dell. And, you know, congratulations for bringing all of these types of stories and bringing these perspectives to the forefront. Yeah, uh, let the audience in on a secret, which is that broadcasters talk to each other. Minority broadcasters have always kept track of where each of us are. And one of the things that I get from my, my colleagues in this business, and they can be at ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, is that you guys get it. I wish I were as free to say what you say on the air, because that is the way we think and we feel. I'm going to, to put this out there, and I want you to think about it during the commercial break, but I want you all to weigh in on this question. What moment on BNC did you say to yourself, I get it? That's why this network is so important. We're going to take a break. You're watching DC Today on our one-year anniversary. We'll be right back. <laughs> 